All right, so this little video is going to go through how to find the equivalence point on your acid base titrations. Um, so what I've done is I pulled up a couple windows. Hopefully you can see on my screen. The first is some sample data from your weak acid sodium hydroxide titration. Um, and I'll go through how to find the equivalence point using this plot, the first derivative and the second derivative. Um, also, I've pulled up our Google Doc for our acid-base titration experiment, and you'll see some instructions um, of how to do this using Logger Pro shown here. This is what I'll be following. Before we do that, I just want to show you what we're trying to do here. Um, you may recall we have a titration curve here, and I'm going to pull up this, this nice website, um, open source website. You can see image and video exchange form. Um, this is openly licensed. Um, so we can share it as long as we attribute it. So this is the website I'm taking it from. And finding the equivalence point on a titration curve. So you can look at this if you want. It's got a lot of information, but what I'm going to jump down to are the plots. So when we collect the data, we should have a plot that looks like this. And this is our sort of raw data of our titration curve. And the key is when we want to find that equivalence point, the equivalence point is halfway up this jump. And so we can look at this curve and we can estimate about halfway up that jump would be the equivalence point. And what we'd want to find from that is what is the volume at that point? So it looks like 25 mils on this plot. And then what is the pH at this point? So we'd come over here to the y-axis and say, you know, 8.6 or something like that on the plot. Um, so that's one way to find the equivalence point is just from halfway up this jump. Some more accurate mathematical ways is to manipulate this curve and do and take what we call the first derivative and then the second derivative of this curve. And let me show you theoretically how this is going to work before we get to the raw data. Um, if we were to take a first derivative of this curve, what's going to happen is your plots can look like this. All right, and if you've taken calculus, you can understand where the derivative is coming from. I'm not going to explain that here. Um, but as you can see, what we're looking for is you'll see your plot is basically flat on the baseline, and then it jumps up to this highest point and then comes back down. Well, that highest point is really corresponding to the middle of this jump. And so on the first derivative plot, what we're looking for is your spike up, and we want the highest point we can find. At this point, we would come down and read our volume. And again, we're going to see 25 milliliters. So the 25 milliliters would be your equivalence point. To find the pH of the equivalence point, we then have to go back to our first plot and say, OK, at 25 mils, come up, and then come up, read it across what is the pH at that point. For the second derivative, the shape of the curve looks a little different. And what we see is when we take the second derivative of this plot, we have a flat baseline. And then we see the shape of the curve go all the way up and then drop all the way down and then come back down and we see it ride this, the x-axis again. What we're looking for here is this spike. And then if we draw a line from this top point to this bottom point, where does that line cross the x-axis? Where does x equal zero if we were to connect, connect points from here to here? At that point, this would be the volume of your equivalence point. Right? So that's what we're trying to do with our three different ways to find the equivalence point. Um, and hopefully this will start to make sense when we see our raw data, which isn't going to look as clean as these curves. So here's our data. Let's go through and manipulate this. So I'm going to pull up my instructions on the side. So I'm going to find the equivalence point using Logger Pro. So um, as we do this, let's see if this works. Um, the first thing we can see is halfway up the curve is maybe about here, right? And so we come down and say, what is our volume? And we can read that off of the x-axis. All right. And, and then we come over here to find the pH. 
Now, I'm going to reopen this file in a real second. Bear with me. Um, I'll explain why in a second. I just want to see if I can't fix this. Okay, here's my file again. Okay, um, the reason why I opened it is if you look in this spot right here, you'll see as I move my cursor, it's giving me the x, y coordinates of my cursor. That's really helpful because now when I come and estimate, okay, so maybe my equivalence point is right here. I can read the x, y coordinates. You can see the x volume is 7.11 milliliters and the pH at that point is 8.19. So those would be the values I'd write down in my data table for the equivalence point using this pH plot. Next, we wanna take the first derivative. So again, following these instructions for the first derivative. So I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna to go to um, data. I'm gonna hit new calculated column. Under name of the calculated column, I'm gonna call it the first derivative. Short name, I'm gonna say D1 for first derivative. Data set, I'm gonna make sure run one is selected. That's just the run that has all of your data here. And now we just have to put an expression in this box below. So I'm gonna take my function, go to calculus, derivative. And under variables, we want our y-axis variable, pH. So now I can hit done. And we can see we have a new column of data. To show that on our plot, we can go with the y-axis label, click it, and I'm gonna change this to first derivative. And, and we should see plot of the first derivative. Okay, so I've changed my y-axis label over here to the first derivative, and here we see our plot. And so again, what we're gonna do here, so here's my plot of the first derivative again, and what you'll see is this general shape as we saw before, it's down here, we see this spike and then it comes back down in here. And so again, what we're looking for is what is the volume of this highest point of the peak. And what's tricky is you might not have a point that's actually at the highest peak. It might, if you imagine making a little point of those two, we have to say, where is that point? So it might be somewhere around here. Now to get the volume, the x-axis value, you should have x, y coordinates in the lower left-hand corner that you can read that volume. And then once you have the volume, you have to go back to your pH plot, put your cursor at that volume. And then from there, you can read the pH. Okay. What we can now do is try and get the second derivative. And in order to do that, I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna say new calculated column. We're going to call it the second derivative. For short name, we call it D2. And then same thing, functions, calculus, second derivative, pH, done. And we should see a green column for the second derivative. And so now what I want to do is come down here and choose second derivative and our plot should switch. So here's my second derivative plot. And so again, what we're looking for is a plot. We'll come back to our document, flat. We have to see a peak, and then we want to know where does it cross the x-axis again when it goes negative. So here's the shape of our plot. We see these points. It comes up to our high point. And so now if we imagine a line between that high point and our low point down here, we would cross the x-axis somewhere in here that is the volume that you need. Then you have to go back to your first plot to read the pH at that specific volume. The advantage here is we can often use the second derivative to find the equivalence points. 
um, even if we don't have a data point at that exact volume because we're connecting these two points in a line. I hope that helps. Thank you.